Good. Coach, what's it like returning to you know veteran specialists and uh, your kicker and your punter in Stonehouse, especially uh, on the punting end? It's it's uh, a blessing, to be honest. You get guys who, first of all, they're they're both guys with next level talent, right? But they also have that next level character. They're great young men. They're the kind of guys that are going to help develop other players in the team. They're the kind of guys you can rely on. You're not going to be worried about somebody being late or anything like that. Really, Jack just made the Dean's list. And, and so he's an awesome punter and an awesome student, and that makes life easy for me. So, And then on the field, obviously, they're awesome now. I will say they're a little quirky. they got their quirks. So. Coach, when you look at the uh, return guys, you know, Trevor Pena and what he's been able to do, as well as a guy like Malachi James and what he can be as a catalyst really anywhere, what can you say about kick and punt return? Uh, well, the goal, the goal is obviously ball security, right? But I think we've got guys who can be dynamic with the ball in their hands. So it's it's really the coaching staff. We've got to put these guys in a great position to make plays. I think we will be able to do that. Um, we always want to be patient with a freshman, with Malachi, if he's the guy who's back there first. Uh, but we got to develop him fast. He's got world-class speed, legitimate world-class speed. If we don't take advantage of that, we're done. So we got to do a great job there. When you look at the kicker, Brady Denneberg coming back, just what he's done and how you've seen him mature over the camp time? Yeah, one of the things about Brady, last season he was 90% touchback in games, right? And so we all know he's got this cannon leg. Well, he was 66% field goal. So through spring and through fall camp, it's been a really, really big focus on attention to little things and building a procedure. Every time he steps on the field, he has four points that are going through his head. Do this, do this, do this, do this, and I'm ready to go. And, and the thing that we found a lot of success in the past, my assistant Will Cole and, and I at other places, if you can help a specialist build a procedure, then they can just fall back on that procedure. It doesn't matter the situation of the game. And then all of a sudden we have a baseline of success, right? And then we start to work the details out of it and we can grow and every day we get a little bit better. And in the case of Brady, he's attacked that. He's attacked that, he really has. So his development's been awesome to see. And like I said about Jack, he's an awesome young man. So it's it's fun when you get to go to work and you want to be around the guys. You know, that's a great, great opportunity. So. What's Coach Fran's philosophy about special teams being a ticket on the field and sure. it's, it's importance? So, to get an opportunity. you know, go all the way back to when, when I got the opportunity to join the staff, he said, you know, special teams is going to be the bridge for the offense and the defense. And our goal as a staff is to win that phase. If we can win special teams and handle the situations, because situ special teams is situational football, right? It's never just an offensive play, right? You're never just run. It's always something and there's all this yardage. So if we can win those aspects, but also we're going to do that, win them by putting our best players on the field. So if you if you can't play on special teams, you can't play on offense or defense. It's not the other way around. So we've got guys. You're gonna see a lot of people. That you're gonna be like, man, that guy's on the punt team. Holy smokes! I didn't realize that. That guy's on the kickoff team. You know. So there'll be a lot of people that will be on the field all the time. It's gonna be great. Coach, over the last few years, uh, a lot of the previous coaching staff really complimented the range of Brady Denneberg. How are you feeling about just his range in terms of uh, field goals and kicks, and you know what we can expect to see from him this year? Yeah, you know. I think obviously, you know, now we're in the day and age that you're seeing in the preseason NFL games how many multiple 50 plus yard field goals, right? And the expectation is that every kicker should do that. And that's not reality, but Brady certainly has the ability to do that. Now, the thing that's helped Brady, and I'll be honest, is uh, Jack Stonehouse, Tom Callahan, Ethan Stangle, uh, Jackson Kennedy, uh, Jacob Zerd, these other guys that have worked with him and gotten it to a point where he can just focus on doing his thing. He doesn't need to have a concern about anybody else's piece of the operation so he can go out and execute at a really high level. So it's, it's going to be exciting to see. We've seen a lot of, in, at least in Syracuse teams in the past, a lot of defensive stars and stars in general participate in punt and kick coverage. How important is their presence in the special teams room to kind of also bridge down for some of the younger players working Absolutely. on kick and punt coverage? Yeah, in any phase. If it's important to the older guys, it better be important to the younger guys, right? You know, when, when you guys see Kyle McCord line up on kickoff cover, you're going to be shy. I'm just kidding. That's not <laughs> but uh, no, it, it really does trickle down. And it, it really helps the young guys understand, hey, look, that guy was an All-American and he's on kickoff. Why aren't I on? Why don't I want to do that? You know, and it really builds the importance. Here's the other piece, though. And Coach Fran is so hands-on. The whole staff coaches on special teams. I have the cool title and all, but like, I all this stuff happens because Coach Wright helps, Coach Schaefer helps, Coach Nick Williams helps. Like, 
the Coach Johnson's out there. These guys are all so hands-on, and that's because that's what Fran wants, and that's how it was set. And and when you have everybody pulling the same direction, and then all of a sudden you've got older, really good, really experienced guys doing it, now all of a sudden the importance on the other end goes up through the roof. We also saw um, towards at the beginning of the year last year it was Justin Barron holding, but then it became uh, Jack Stonehouse after Barron's injury. Now I'm assuming that Stonehouse is going to be holding on, kick, on field goals for this year. How is he going in that position? You know, it's funny. So Riley Dixon, who played here, right? Riley said he had an opportunity late in his career and still does to this day because he's a better holder than most of the other guys that go in and try to punt against him. And Jack had an opportunity to work with Riley, obviously, in the offseason. And that was one of the things they spent a ton of time on, not just punting, but being a better holder. And, and uh, there's a holder award out there in our room. We call it the lounge. We, we joke that, hey, you're going to get this holder award. But for real, he takes it that seriously. And we like to say, if it's good for you, it's good for the team, right? So if you can be the best holder in the country, it's going to be good for our team. And then think about it again. Brady doesn't have to worry about a thing. He gets out there. He gets the opportunity. And I'll tell you what. Jaden O, Jackson Kennedy, didn't have to worry about a thing through camp. They get out there, they know that they're going to get a great hold, and it's going to be done well. How important Two more is it, questions. How important is it to have in a long life Brandon Dixon be uh, around the program, especially when he was in the last spring? Well, I, I mean, look, Syracuse has had a laundry list of amazing specialists, right? Andre Sismet, the, the list is long, right? Mare, uh, Riley's one of those guys. But the, the greatest thing here that Fran has done is open these doors back to all the alumni. It's not just from the specialists. You know, Keith Bullock was out here at practice for three days working with guys. And he's not just working with the linebackers. He's teaching, hey, O lineman, do you know if a linebacker does this? And now all of a sudden our O lineman. But the, the reality is if you're going to have a program anywhere and you want to build the program, not the team, you have to have all the past players involved. And Franz does such a great job of opening these doors and getting our history back in here. Final question. You talked about how you know there's going to be offensive players and defensive players that are making an impact there, but also playing on special teams. Is there anyone in particular that's really bought in to a potential role on the special teams unit? Man, it's hard to say because I feel like we've got a good core and it's over a dozen guys that you would say, hey, these are the core special teams guys, but that's also Marlo Wax and Justin Barron who are defensive big time starters. Aronde Gadsden is going to start on multiple special teams and he's one of the premier tight ends in the nation, right? So you're going to see a lot of familiar faces across the board. It's not going to be one individual guy. You know, but I will say this. The reason we're going to have a ton of success is because of what Chad Smith and the rest of the strength and conditioning staff did for our players. We're going through stuff now. At a lot of places I've been, you get to the special teams period, and guys are gassed. And now we're in it, and guys are flying around. And it's because they came in here ready to play. And that's a huge credit to our strength and conditioning staff, Chad, Chad Smith and those guys. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.